The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me, and delight to know my ways. As if they were a nation that practiced righteousness, and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day, and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? A day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush, and to lie in a sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and to bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your needs in parched places, and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be the, called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. The reading is from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, 
be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry, but as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the hand and for the left, the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown and yet as well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to Glory you, to you Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, 
Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, For they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Gracious God of the unknowing and bringer of light, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. A deacon brings the needs of the world to the church but I'm finding it more necessary this particular year to bring the sacraments to the world because the world needs sacraments. The world needs the sacred. Some people whom we never would have guessed are going to food banks for their food. We would never have dreamed that so many would be on unemployment. Cars are sitting in garages with their tires getting flat. We have seen the knee of a police officer on the neck of a black man, and we all gasped. We barely escaped a coup. We have seen the fires. We have felt the winds, and we have breathed ash into our lungs. I never would have dreamed that we would ever say with bated breath, I am getting the vaccine. We do not know what's in store for us. We are truly living on the edge of a mystery. We are now deeply in the unknown, just where God wants us to be. As it says in the famous Christian mystical work, The Cloud of Unknowing, when you first begin in faith, you find only darkness, and it is is as if it were a cloud of unknowing. You don't know what this means, except that in your will, you feel a simple, steadfast intention reaching out towards God. Do what you will. And this darkness and this cloud remain between you and God. Reconcile yourself to wait in this darkness as long as is necessary, but still go on longing after him whom you love. God has not left us. God has simply brought us right into the depth of our deepest faith. Sure, God challenges us, and we feel the weight of this challenge, 
and it is up to us to rise to the occasion. It's up to us to feel the textures of the outer rim of our faith. When you, when you feel into the outer rim of your faith, where is your rim? God is pushing you to expand your faith, to deepen your trust, to center your beingness on God. Only in the dark does the light become truly a focal point. Now let's be honest with ourselves. Has the light of Christ ever been the focal point of every area of our lives? As a deacon, I would like to think so. But I'm only human being like you. I'm only a human being like you. And my intention needs to be constantly brought back to the Christ-like. And what better way to get my attention than to shine a light in the dark? Like the rings of a tree, these past 12 months have been just phenomenal for us. And I don't know about you, but for me, it is a mark of humility. I believe we have been humbled. I believe we understand something the ancients understood, that there are forces that are greater than us. One has only to look at the wildness of unpredictable weather to begin to understand our vulnerability before God. And it is in that vulnerability that we kneel, whether it is home, whether it is in our hearts, or whether it is on altar rail kneelers, we receive the imposition of ashes with the word that says, the words that say, you are dust and to dust you shall return. Last Saturday, we celebrated in our liturgical calendar, the contributions of God's servant, Absalom Jones. He wanted his freedom so badly that he wrote to his master asking for his freedom. Why should a grown man have to go to another grown man to ask for his freedom? No one should ever have to go to another human being to ask for their freedom. After the abolition of slavery in Pennsylvania, he became a lay minister of the interracial congregation of St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church, but he still felt the pinch of racism and discrimination. In 1792, he and other black members of the church were suddenly told that they could not join other members of the church seated on the first floor. Instead, they had to sit in the gallery or balcony. He was a lay minister in the Methodist Episcopal Church. How would you like to be a lay minister of a church and be told suddenly that you have to sit in the back? With that, a group of black congregants walked out and started the African Episcopal Church of St. Thomas, which became the first black Episcopal Church in Philadelphia. A month after St. Thomas opened, the founders of the church said that their intent was, and I quote, to arise out of the dust and shake ourselves and throw off the servile fear that the habit of oppression and bondage trained us up in. Absalom Jones became the first black American Episcopal priest. And you might find this interesting that our own Absalom Jones also lived during an epidemic, yellow fever. He and his colleague, Richard Allen, assisted Dr. Benjamin Rush, who was put in charge of providing assistance to the plague victims. It was thought that black people were immune to yellow fever. And you can find this in Wikipedia Many whites fled the city hoping to escape infection. Alan Jones's core of black Philadelphians helped nurse the sick as well as bury the dead. Jones in particular sometimes worked through the night when Matthew Carey published a particularly popular pamphlet accusing blacks of profiting from nursing white citizens, sick white citizens. Jones and Allen published a protest pamphlet in response. They described sacrifices that they and members of the Free African Society had made for the health of the city. Philadelphia Mayor Matthew Clarkson 
who had called upon them for help, publicly recognized that Jones and Allen acted upon their desires to improve the entire community. Jones's response to the overall crisis strengthened ties between free blacks and many progressive whites, aiding him later on when he established St. Thomas's Episcopal Church. Almost 20 times more black people helped the plague struck than did whites, which later proved crucial in helping St. Thomas Church to gain social acceptance. We see here the divine, how the divine works through the power of vulnerability. See, vulnerability is the key to the passage in Mark 10, where Jesus says, come to me as a little child. Come to me in your vulnerability, in your authentic self, in recognition that the divine is a greater of a greater nature than even yourself. In your childlike vulnera vulnerability, unlike only the heart, in your childlike vulnerability, understand that only the heart can understand, that it is only in the divine that you abide. As James Cone said in God of the Oppressed, the Christian community is that community that freely becomes oppressed because they know that Jesus himself has defined human humanity's liberation in the context of what happens to the little ones. I venture to guess that if you are like most people in the world right now, that you may be feeling a little piece of vulnerability in a new way. But no, it is that very vulnerability that God is calling out of you and me to come and meet Jesus. See, vulnerability is the language of the heart. The mind could never understand it. And it is the essence of who you are. Jesus says, come to me as a little child, for such is the kingdom of God. The vehicle of connection is your vulnerability. Let's face it, we in this society are deeply impoverished in terms of our connection to one another in the depths of our relationship and intimacy. As Brene Brown is fond of saying, staying vulnerable is a risk we have to take if we want to experience connection. See, you are each worthy of love and belonging. With the imposition of ashes comes what might feel like your darkest hour. In your humility and reverence for the divine, know that the light is coming. Amen.
Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel or stand before the Lord, our Maker and our Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.
Together we pray. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess, we confess to you, Lord, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess, we confess to you, Lord, Lord, our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord, accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept, Accept our, our repentance, repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept, Accept our, our repentance, repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept, Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you.